Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Italy, episode number 20. Okay, so well, we lost this Farmento and that was a sad defeat, but uh, the overall battle itself was a victory. Um, we're down one Dreadnought. It didn't take very long. Very, very soon. I mean, when was this thing constructed? I mean, it did not have a very long service life, but that's okay. Um, we were able to sink a Dreadnought and a battleship and um, a couple of destroyers in return, which is a very favorable exchange. Although I have mentioned this a few times, the more I think about it, the more I feel that any kind of big ship losses really sets you back because any other nation that's not fighting doesn't have the same problem. So what I'm trying to say here is I'm beginning to think that a very conservative style of play is the optimal Although it's like boring and I, I disagree with that kind of gameplay design decision. But it seems like because AI, sh AI do not go to war with each other, that they will always have, well, basically they will never have um, ships being sunk unless they're at war with you. Um, you will always be losing ships and your wars. So if, you know, you don't go to war with Great Britain and then all of a sudden, you know, three wars later you are at war with them, well, you've suffered so many losses that um, they're just... Budget-wise, even if you're equal in budget, they're probably ahead of you. So just then, um, that was a, a line of thought I had. But um, okay, so can't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> Let's just push on. They are still getting. Uh, oh, so speaking of the other sh <laughs> navies not losing ships, the Jupiter was lost and the British Albion, a Dreadnought, was lost. And we get another fleet battle, which we will definitely accept. We will try to continue accepting these until, God willing, one day we sink enough of, the, of their ships that they don't want to fight us anymore. Now, one thing I'm missing at this point, now that we're in the 1910s, is a solid destroyer fleet. And it's funny because I just started building new light cruisers, but until I get double tubes, it's really, really hard to um, focus on destroyers. So we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, this is probably not something I care about. I've also been contemplating going to captain's mode because it is pretty bad, the, well, the advantage the AI will take advantage of for launching torpedoes. So I'm beginning to suspect that maybe I should just go to captain's mode, which would enable us to launch torpedoes whenever we want. I mean, whenever we're in range or we have a any kind of firing solution. So for now, I think I'll take you off AI control. We'll put you to core to the Africanus, I believe. But I'm just gonna manually control you myself. So keep 16. And steady as she goes. Wind is out. Okay, who is... You are following the Marchius Agrippa. You are following the Truria. Are you not... Are you core? No, 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 no. Go to support for the Truria. Okay. Now you can remain core for the Africanus. There we go. And no problems anymore this time. These are probably battle cruisers, which is why I pulled my Etna away. My, my, my. Well, we'll be in the thick of it pretty soon here, won't we? I'm going to send the Etna west, but the rest of my ships north. Okay, this is just an armored cruisers. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't, I, I have a feeling the rest of their fleet's up here and I want to keep the wind advantage, even though moderate breeze, it's, yeah, it's probably worth fighting for. Okay, that surely has got to be the rest of their fleet. I mean, it hasn't reported anything yet, but uh, surely, right? Let's come in. It might not be. Actually, let's keep going north. 
until I have confirmation that this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the rest of their fleet, I'm going to keep going. In fact, let's go squad max with my Etna, who has the wind advantage, it should be said. Yeah, this is definitely not their main fleet. So we did the right thing by not choosing to engage. Let's see what happens here. Let our battle fleet form up its line again. That now has taken a few hits actually from the Saida class. Saida. Six inch guns. We should be actually stopping the penetration of those. Superstructure penetration. Wow. Six inch. Six inch conning tower. I'm actually a bit surprised by that. The Etna has taken quite a few hits. Yeah, okay, well, we, we still think that we're doing the right thing here. Uh, could I be mistaken? Could I be mistaken? Do we have to roll over on them? Is this the entirety of their fleet? It can't be, right? We can't go much further before we actually get close to Pola. Boy, that is a long name. <laughs> we actually are starting to dish some damage back out. It looks like they're wandering into range of our 12-inch guns. We can train our gun sights on them. You know, just uh, give our crew something. Wow, did this ship get slowed down or something? Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pursue. At this point, I think uh, it warrants a pursuit. Because I haven't found them yet, and I don't know where they are. And we can we just can't hold off forever. We've actually held off a pretty long time. Oh, a fire started. Not good. We held off a pretty long time without... Uh, changing course. We just really left our dreadnoughts and our battleships in reserve for a while. Feeling that they had to be coming with the reserves, but it never it never happened, right? Okay, let's pull back the Etna then. We'll just form up one big line. Wow, that Cobra class sank already. Good. Strategic victory, if nothing else. Now we only have to control two ships right now, which I'm pretty happy about. Oh, okay. Pause. Thank you. So things are going to get a bit dicey. Do we go for it still? Okay, let's go squad max, which I actually need to limit to 19 to keep my battleships in tow. Let's try to close. Let's try to do it before night. We've already won the battle in the sense that we have sunk a destroyer. But it could get better for us even. If we're lucky. Conning tower hit. So I guess the superstructure is not the conning tower. Because that conning tower didn't penetrate. And it specifically named it. I very, very rarely see the conning tower actually being hit though. That's why I've chosen to kind of decrease the, uh, the conning tower armor over time. I used to be like really gung-ho about that. Because I thought I would be protecting the bridge and such. But... Turns out that's not really how it works. All right, I'm, we're gonna leave the battleships behind a little bit. That's just gonna be how it is though, because we want to try to close with these ships. And we're willing to risk separating our battle group a little bit to do it. Okay. So much so that I think we'll drive right down into them. Okay, this is uh, probably what I expected was gonna happen. Let's uh, stay right behind her to prevent torpedo launching. We're definitely within torpedo range, so we'll pull back away. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. How are we doing? We're running right into the line of destroyers. That's just not ideal. 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, tough little pickle we are in here. This is probably another armored cruiser. I don't think the Edna is going to... It's probably going to go to AI control, but we're going to hopefully... We're just going to drive through here because we're going to avoid torpedoes better if we go right through the line, I believe. Um, we're doing a lot of damage to this armored cruiser, which I believe it actually is an armored cruiser. And looks like the Saida class. They don't have very many torpedoes to launch anyway. So that's good to see. Lots of hits on this armored cruiser. Almost surely coming to a, um, a, a, a stop. Let's manually take control of this one and send it directly ahead just because I don't want it to turn and show a broadside for torpedoes. Kind of the same way with this Etna. Oh my god, they would just slaughter this thing. And now I probably don't have to worry as much about being hit by torpedoes because there's really nothing left of that one uh, to, to threaten us. Yeah, so we'll just go right by it and get out of the way as quickly as possible, really, for the potential torpedo launches from the south. So now that you've cleared it, now that you've cleared it, we'll turn you all north. We'll turn north, we'll pursue this other um, armored cruiser, which we saw up here. We haven't engaged the fleet uh, assault option, so we shouldn't be losing our formation. I don't know what these guys are doing. They are, I think that they're doing a torpedo run, but I, it's unnecessary. I didn't ask for one. Okay, we'll continue our pursuit here. Let's go squad max. I think everyone should be at squad max, basically. It's, you know, all the rowers are going to be going maximum speed at this point, whether or not one ship can row faster than the other. <laughs> to bring, like, a really ancient analogy, I don't know why I would choose that, but we did. Ah, uh, rudder damage. Okay, so we are catching up to this, though. That destroyer has sunk. So far, two destroyers and I would guess that armored cruiser. We can still see it, it's on fire. It took a lot of damage as well. Look at the light cruisers are actually protecting us. This is great. Okay, fantastic. So we're actually gonna hopefully be able to pull, oh God. This is probably a, not just a, oh my God. Such damage. Pull off. Pull off. Hopefully these guys are all still fine. They look fine to me. Get away. Just don't want to lose my light cruisers now. We've done so well already. Oh, this ship is on fire, but starting to move. Okay, well, then... <sighs> what to do about that? Like, extremely surprising. That thing just took a pounding, but uh, okay, it's not impossible. So we will retreat back through the battle lines. This is gonna be pretty dangerous. I'm gonna put AI control for these guys until I need to turn it off. Uh, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back for this ship, which is now dead stopped, but we're not gonna be able to catch the other one anyway. They should have a higher range than we do. We're now pounding on a light cruiser, is it? No, it's a destroyer. Not that I mind, it's quite acceptable and by my, uh, in my opinion to destroy a few more destroyers. One more just destroyed immediately. Probably what was that, a 12 inch hit? That thing just got blown out of the water. No, it was six inch hits, but just immediately destroyed it in a minute, just sank it in a minute. It's really impressive. And the rest of our battleships are kind of clearing out of the way of, although these are just some light cruisers, you know, that's fine. So we'll just go back down to this other ship, which I believe has actually sunk by now. few other hits. Yetna's um, looks like she's going to pull out okay too. We'll slow down to 18, maybe 17. Cruise back over here, form up the line again. I think that these guys are doing something strange. Huh. I don't know why they're not falling into line. Now we saw the ship down here, right? So I, I don't remember where it was exactly, but I think it already sank. Fine by me. All right, well, let's pursue our Etna over here, see what happened with the rest of the fleet. I don't know what the Etna is doing up there anyway. 
And if we come into contact with enemies, we will shoot at them. Uh, that's not the kind of enemy I wanted to pursue. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to run consistently, and we're just going to get the Etruria to go back to port. And we'll just mainly take control of the Etna and get her to also join the lines. Good. So, good. I'm pretty happy about this. It looks like at least three destroyers and um, on top of that we also were able to take out the dreadnought no sorry armored cruiser <laughs> without losing a dreadnought <laughs> oh okay we could have also pushed them over here we had an installation probably a four inch one yeah not much to do um, could have took a made a visit to Venice anyway we'll just go into port and uh, save the rest of our ships no losses, which is always nice. Okay, so they did have battle cruisers somewhere. They probably just went right to port or something. So we did sink the armored cruiser, we sank four destroyers, and really not much damage done to ours. Fantastic, that's like a really, like an exceptional um, victory already. Okay, a few interruptions so far, but we're doing, <laughs> we'll get there slowly. Uh, yeah, good result for us. Very good result. Armored cruiser down. Should increase our blockade. We've been blockading them for, I don't know how many months exactly. I'm guessing about six. So these are good results. Uh, not a good cruiser, I would say. Four inch guns and turrets. I, I, that is one thing I probably should be doing is only building turrets now. Ooh, quality zero 13 inch guns. That, I didn't have those already? Hmm. That would have been a really interesting decision if I had quality 1 12-inch guns, quality 0 13-inch guns, and quality negative 1 14-inch guns. But as it was, the decision was a little bit easier. 1-1-3. One, one, um, they're still doing a little bit of damage, which is nice. You know, it, I have to say, having an ally is really nice, and this really demonstrates, I think, the, um, the advantage, not advantage, but the... Uh, I don't know, the immersion, something. The, the greatness of having AI nations killing each other is that there's, you feel like you're really part of an immersive world where others, like, it's not all about you because although it's nice to have a game which respects the player more than any other nation, I mean, if you had to wait for other nations to go to war or something, I mean, Aurora 4X is what I was thinking here. <laughs> if you had to wait for... AIs to fight battles in like real time while you were waiting that would be annoying but um, but having them fight each other and do damage to ships and stuff and forcing them to use their budget uh, rather than just building a super uber fleet for you to fight some 10 years later that's nice by the way auto resolve I, I know I've mentioned this a few times but I've actually gotten to the point of writing a it's right now only 1v1 program for rule the waves ship combat simulation um, check I, I'm, on my discord I'm actually if anybody's interested in helping to alpha test it I want to move it up to fleet combat and then I'm going to propose to Frederick or you know put on the rule the waves form actually try to get it implemented as a uh, an auto resolve option for every battle so you don't have to suffer victory point defeat all the time anytime you want to decline a battle you can actually auto resolve so okay let's see what we're up against though I'm guessing it could be a battle cruiser, so as always, I have to make a beeline for port, which in this instance is north. Well, I don't think we can misrepresent a, a light cruiser. It could be an armored cruiser, but let's go after it. So I'm just going to lock in here, and we'll go up to fast until we can close. Don't, let's actually just hold fire until I say open up. Since we're not just we're just not going to do enough damage. And are they eking out? They are 23 knots, so maybe I should just start open fi opening fire. That's just the extreme of our range, though. Well, I mean, there's no point in holding fire because we're going to. Um, yeah, they're going to escape anyway, right?
What port do you think they're trying to make for? Wait, I mean, eventually, if we keep them, if we keep them in sight for long enough, we're down to 20 knots, though. I think they're gonna get away. We'll pursue, wow, we're down to 19 knots, come on. This ship is very, very not rated for long distance. I was gonna say, if we could keep up with them for long enough, they would have hit a divot in the coast. Okay, so meaningless battle. Um, still blockading them, which is fantastic, because we actually did have three ships. I forgot to show it was the Regulus, I believe, was out for one month. Chibo and the Etna, no, I thought it was the Etna. I guess the Etna and the um, Regulus were out for, no, no, it was the Il Leone de Venezia. These were both out for one month, and this one, Chibo Glorioso, Glorioso, you can see she was out for two months total after that um, previous action, the one where we took out the armored cruiser. So <clears throat> she now has one more month, and then we'll have the full strategic effect. I hope that we can disrupt these raiders soon, though, because they will take a toll eventually. Four, I mean, two, four, one, three. Jeez, my God. Yeah, and this is what, uh, this is like kind of the typical result. You usually see a minesweeper being sunk or something silly like that. <clears throat> okay, let's try to get the, this time, let's try to get them. Could, this will probably be the time we actually get a battle cruiser involved, but I'm going to go for it a little more gung-ho because I would just, I just want to, I want to sink their ships. <laughs> So let's actually just go dead on at them. The wind side would be slightly to the west. What are we up against here? Yeah. Pursuit. Catching this one. Oh yeah, we're definitely catching them. Okay, whoops. <laughs> this happened a little too fast for me to even react, but wow, only 350. I didn't actually check out, but I should have seen how much, uh, what their armament was. Let's go to, let's, let me just find out. Okay, here we see the Jupiter class. This is why it was only worth like 300 points. Doesn't matter though, it still counts as a uh, light cruiser. Just like my strategic dreadnoughts count as a full dreadnought for points. So, um, yeah. Anyways, this episode has been kind of a wash. I have... <laughs> I'm trying to record this around a lot of distractions. We will always choose only the Navy can win this war. And we will continue... Oil firing! We don't have access to oil, which... Oh, wow. Uh, Navarra, that's actually... That's pretty significant. Declining a destroyer action gives them... Well, we'll accept... Because we should have more than a destroyer, which we do. So let's see how this goes. I was going to say something, though. Oil. Ah, we don't know who has oil. Do we have access to oil? No. Yeah, I, d I did not think so. Okay, so we've spotted a ship. Let's go squad max. It should be a destroyer raid, right? So in theory, this is not a battle cruiser. In theory. In theory, these are destroyers. We'll just head right to port. That is not good. No, they turn pretty quickly, which is a good sign. Um, yeah, it is a bunch of destroyers. Are they just gonna enter port? That would make this a pretty pointless engagement if <laughs> if they start right next to a port and they just enter it immediately okay we'll we'll brave the land um, now did we hit that we did hit this ship I think so strike one I mean cross out one is what I mean by that not strike one as in we missed not the baseball term but strike one from your potential combatants and I you know what I would really love to to do a lot of damage to these ships, which are one of the reasons why I was not having strategic superiority. And fortunately, these this coastal four-inch battery is doing a number. Oh god. And those unidentified ships, what are they? 
They did the same thing I was trying to do then. They pulled me into the coastal battery. <laughs> okay. But as soon as the Cagliari can get out of there. Yeah, they're trapping themselves. That would be nice. Go ahead and trap yourselves there if you could. There we go. How long will this insanity go on for? <laughs> Come on, Cagliari. <laughs> Come on. Now, the Quercia of Reale is just doing a number on these destroyers. And I'm pretty sure destroyer um, torpedoes cannot go through land. Pretty confident about that. I think we can't fire. Can we fire over this landmass? Okay. Excuse me, by the way. Let me adjust this real fast. I think that's true. I think it is true that they cannot fire torpedoes through the landmass. Because you can't go through the ship. I mean, as a ship, you can't go through. So it would make sense, only makes sense that you can't um, navigate a torpedo through there either. I mean, we know, of course, realistically, you could not. But the Cagliari just really needs to get its rudder repaired. That's like 30 minutes its rudder has been jammed. Uh, well, I mean, talk to the Bismarck, right? The Bismarck did not fix her rudder very quickly either. It just happens to be very, very convenient that the Cagliari is <laughs> spinning in circles right next to a coastal battery. Rudder is repaired. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to form, and I don't know what damage has been done to these. Let's Let's attempt to pursue them a little bit longer, though. Okay, we got this origin. Let's take advantage of her slow speed. Not seeing any hits. Oh, she, she sunk. Fantastic. Well, you know what? Yeah, we'll just we'll take this four-inch coastal battery out of action ourselves. And switch targets probably right about now. Uh, uh, I mean, if we're launching torpedoes, they're launching torpedoes, right? Okay, it's nighttime. We know that there's a f um, few merchant ships over here. If we stumble upon them, that's just good luck, good fortune. Yeah, this is, I think, a merchant ship. It's going pretty fast for a merchant ship. But that's what we saw in here, a minesweeper. Okay, that's also acceptable. Those cannot have um, torpedoes on them, so I wasn't too worried about that. All right, let's just go ahead and just sail our way out of here. <laughs> bizarre, bizarre, bizarre episode. With all the cuts in it and uh, with the rather interesting engagement here. We'll probably not make it back to port exactly, but there it is. Okay. I think... I thought we sank more than two. I mean, I thought we actually had the sunk icon for more than two. Am I crazy? One, two. Huh. Uh, we had one down here which was dead stopped, and then it, I thought we sunk that one down here. Because this was towards the end. These were both just about the time we pulled out, but that one the initial one here, I guess that one was not sunk. Probably, well, it might have just come to a dead stop, and I assumed it was sinking. Well, something. Whatever the case is, it's still a victory for us. A minor one. And it is two less destroyers we have to deal with. That's the one thing I really do hope, um, is that we get some... Um, destroyers of our own, which of course is again still going to require double torpedo mounts. So let's hope that, that happens sooner rather than later. Okay, good. We're slowly wearing down the Austro Hungarian people. And we have a fleet battle. An unexpected battle. This will be interesting. And it'll also have to happen on the next episode because we're out of time. <laughs> we are out of time. 
So we can see, I would say that the destroyers have not heavily swayed the battles. You can see it's, you know, almost uh, the middle of the game. And destroyers don't come in their, into their own until about now. So I've been happy, happy enough without destroyers, but that's going to be an emphasis for the upcoming, uh, for the upcoming episodes. Hopefully, again, we still need double torpedo mounts. I, I refuse to build a destroyer without double torpedo mounts. But if we can get that, we can probably at least get six torpedoes, um, three double torpedoes in, down the center line. I don't know. Anyway, so stay tuned. Another fleet battle with our three strategic dreadnoughts, of course. Actually, this is the entire fleet. And what do they have? Um, they don't have any dreadnoughts. They have three battle cruisers, so that, and they're with more tonnage. So that's scary. And they don't have any battleships. So it's really three and four versus three battle cruisers. And a score of carriers. I mean, um, <laughs> carriers, that'd be nice. Uh, armored cruisers. So anyways, thanks for watching. And until the next episode, take care.